In this video, I want to show you how to install and run Pop OS on a virtual machine on Hyper-V in Windows 10. Before we begin, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel so to support the channel. I'm assuming here that you already have Hyper-V installed. If this is not the case, please look in the description for a link of a video I've made on how to install Hyper-V. The first step is to download the Pop OS image. To do this, open the browser, go to system76.com, click on Discover Pop OS, click on Download, and here you have two options. In case you're installing Pop OS on a physical laptop or PC, choose the graphic card that you have on this physical laptop or PC. Here, I'm installing it on Hyper-V, so I'm going to keep it on Intel AMD. You have the requirements. We're going to see this when we create the virtual machine. So at this stage, you have to click on Download. And as you see, the download begins. It's a pretty big download. It's 2.1 gigabyte. So I'm going to pause this video and come back when the download finishes. Now the download finished and we have the download and the downloads folder as you see here. The next step is to go to Hyper-V Manager and create a virtual machine so to install on it the Pop! OS operating system. So let's click on the search box, type in Hyper-V and click on Hyper-V Manager. In Hyper-V Manager on the right side, click New, select Virtual Machine, click Next, name it what you want. Here I'm going to name it Pop OS. Click Next, keep it on Generation 1, click Next. For the memory, we saw on the System76 Pop OS website that the minimal requirements is 2 GB. Although on 1 GB it will work also, but it will be very slow. So I'm going to put it on 2 GB. Keep Use Dynamic Memory for this virtual machine checked. Click Next. For networking, I'm going to choose an external network. If you don't have it configured in Hyper-V, take a look at the video in the description to see how to do it. So select an external facing network. Click Next. At this stage, we need to create the hard disk. So here it's proposing the name Pop OS VHDX. I'm going to keep it as it is, but I don't need 127 gigabyte. So I'm going to put it at 40 gigabyte only. Of course, put the size you want, but don't put the size less than 16 gigabyte. Click Next. For the installation of the operating system, I'm going to choose the ISO file that we just downloaded from System76 website. So click on Install an Operating System from a bootable CD DVD-ROM and then click Image File, click Browse, go to the Downloads folder or the folder where you downloaded the ISO, select it, click Open and then click Next and click Finish. The virtual machine will be created as you see. It's turned off. We need to just make one small configuration still. So Make sure it is selected and then click on Settings. Go to Processor and give it two virtual processors, otherwise it will be very slow. Click on OK. Now we need to start the virtual machine and start the installation. So it is selected. Click on Connect. Click on Start and the virtual machine will start and the installation will start automatically because we attached the ISO image. As you see here, it's starting the installation. Give it time and don't interrupt it. And here's the Pop OS background. And now this is the wizard that will take us through the installation process. I'm going to keep the language at English. So click on Select. Here you need to choose the country you're living in. Choose the country and click on select. For the keyboard layout, 
I'm gonna change it because I have a French Canadian keyboard. Of course, choose the keyboard that you have. Click on select. And here you have two options to do the installation. Because this is a first time installation, I'm gonna select clean installation. Click on clean install. And here it detected the Microsoft virtual disk. So select it, click on erase and install. So of course it will create a partition in the virtual disk. It will format it and it will start the installation. Pop OS has an option to encrypt the disk that it is installed on. I don't need this option now. In case you need it, just click on choose password and put a strong password and make sure to write it and put it in a safe place because if you forgot the password it won't be possible for you to start the machine again so now i'm gonna choose don't encrypt in case you want to see the progress of the installation you can click on this square here so that it will show you the details of the installation i'm gonna show you so in case you're wondering if the installation is stuck here you can make sure that it's not stuck once you see the progress and the details. Once the installation finishes, you'll get this screen. At this stage, before restarting the device, you need to eject the media that we inserted. So click on media, click DVD drive and select eject pop OS. And then here click on restart device. Wait for it to restart. At first start, it will ask us to create a user. Give it time and don't interrupt it. So this is the machine starting after the installation. This is the welcome screen. Just click on next. Once again, it's asking us to choose the keyboard. Here it's already pre-selected the one I wanted. Of course, choose the keyboard you want. Click on Next. I'm going to enable location services. And here, if your time zone is not correct, just search for your time zone and select it. Here it selected my time zone correctly. So I'm going to click on Next. I'm not going to connect any online account. Of course, if you have online accounts that you want to connect, feel free to choose them. So I'm going to click on skip. And here it's asking me to create a user. So I'm going to create a user called KST for knowledge sharing tech. It automatically populated the username. So click on next. And choose a password for your user. Click on next and here it is all done. I'm going to click on start using pop OS and it will start as you will see. And here's pop OS started. If you click on activities, you have your applications and here you have your volume and the network and all the settings. One small step remains. Of course, when you install always a Linux distribution, you need to update it the first time. So here, as you saw, I clicked on activities and I selected the terminal. And in the terminal, just key in sudo apt update to check if there are updates that are required. Put the password for your user, press on enter. And here, after the updates, we're going to run sudo apt upgrade. And this step takes a little bit of time. Click on enter. Choose yes. And here, the upgrade finished. It's telling me that a restart is required. So let's restart it.
So that was it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Don't hesitate to leave me your comments. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.